people, that's not going to do much for you there. Choice Scarf, Decorate would be the best option if you do end, take, end up taking that. Or a Spore would not be bad as well. Just having that Spore pressure would be massive. I don't think it's the worst choice. I think it's not the worst choice, but I think on this team of Pokemon, I mean, for Rigraph and Blood Moon, you get a lot of offensive power. Grim Snarl, as Grim much as you don't love it as a Choice Scarf Pokemon, it's I can at least do some damage where Smeargle can do no damage. There it is. As we start here, we see Ride on Cineroar versus that Smeargle and Ice Rider. Smeargle and Ice Rider have been a very powerful combo. We saw it in the last game, which got Patrick his win there. Yeah, I got the win last time, but will it get the win once again? Let's see, Smeargle's attack and not lowered because of own temper in the clear amulet, making this Incineroar really do nothing on its opening. Yeah, it's interesting to see own tempo on a Smeargle instead of Moody. Moody used to be a very broken ability on Smeargle, but not running Moody, running with own tempo is interesting to play here. Exactly, very interesting, a very key play right there. Big out pressure though, being supplied by this summer is gonna be absolutely imperative. And already we're seeing the Terra be committed onto the Maridon, of course. Just even the Volt Switch is as powerful as a Regieleki using Max Lightning. So that is an absolutely amazing first opening turn right there. If you use Electro Drift, it's even stronger than that. Yeah, we are seeing the Terra fire Calyrex again. So thankfully not that Terra Water, so not weak to it. Not weak to those Electro Drifts and not that Terra Grass. We're seeing that Terra Fire very... I feel like more offensive compared to the other two. There's the Fake Out onto the Maridon. Maridon will get to do nothing this turn. Ooh. And Fake Out moves after the other Smeargle. I think Michael was probably hoping that he would go first and his Incineroar would be slightly faster than Smeargle. It is not. But now we are within the trick room. Things are looking dire now for Michael. This Maridon, well, it can tank a hit. It's going to be very low. It's going to have to try and take something out in one clean hit next turn. Yeah, we are seeing, again, with this, this is the Calyx Ice Slide, Ice Rider set that has the close combat. So no stopping tantrum. So actually a lot worse into this Maridon matchup. If you have Sonic Tantrum, we really put on that pressure early. We are seeing Ditto in the back there, probably waiting to use Ditto until that Calyrex has killed a few Pokemon to copy those uh, those Grim Nays when it transforms. Exactly, it is the insurance policy. If this Moridon goes down, it'll fill that slot right back up. But no, we're gonna get the swap out right now. Into the Wimscot, you wanna try and turn this one around for yourself in some supportive way, but the Tailwind is not gonna help you too much in this trick room. No, Tailwind's not going to be super impactful right now. There's the Flare Blitz into the Smeargle. Try and get the Smeargle off the floor, and Smeargle goes away. Big pickup there. No more support mon for that Calyrex. So the first support mon down. We yeah. cool damage taken, but it's not going to be too bad. I think that fake out on the Smeargle was actually super impactful, as you prevented from living with that Focus Ash on this turn. So really, it got it got the fake out out once, and now it's it. I'm going to hit the Encore onto the... Calyrex there, really forcing it to protect, so I, so hopefully we see the Calyrex switch there so it doesn't get locked to the Encore Protect. Exactly. Now it's in a really rough spot. It could still switch out even if Encore, though, so there yeah, it is. Yeah, there's the switch out. Good play there. There it is. Switching into the Urshifu. This is also another single strike Urshifu. Again, running a very similar team to last time, so that single strike Urshifu taking that dark typing. Whipscott lives! Ursula takes a lot of life orb damage. There's the knockoff to actually remove the life orb from it. Yeah, this Ursula is going to be a big threat on the field now. It's hard, tough to deal with it right now because what are you? You don't have anything super effective against it. You have nothing to really shut it down either. No, and you're slower and you're faster than it. Yeah, that sure. Urshifu though, incredibly fast. There is the encore. So actually, just forcing it into hyper voice and no chance to do the blood move. Incineroar will live, Wimscott goes down, but it did its job, so it's fine with piecing out for a little bit. Now this Ice Rider is still up on the other side, knocking off the Sash is going to be, oh, it's a Choice Band, actually. Yeah, knocking off that Choice Band is, re is honestly probably really helpful, you reduce the damage. Now, you have some choices, you could copy the Urshifu. Or I don't think cop, I think you want to save Ditto for that Ice Rider. I think Urshifu is helpful and probably actually, actually, Ditto's not a bad choice. Urshifu will help you with this Blood Moon matchup here. 
Yeah, and you have the choice scarf, which is often a pick on the Urshifu as well. It's not a bad choice at, at all. Yeah, so we'll pick up that imposter. Again, no boost this Urshifu, so it'll just be a plain ditto. Yeah, you can finally take down this uh, this wall that is Ursuluna just tanking hit after hit. One more round of Trick Room as well. You're going to try and turn this one out, maybe outlast in just that bit longer, but time is ticking. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens here. We can go to the close combat into the Ursaluna. Or will the Ursaluna... Really, the Ursaluna does not have a good switch out here. So I think if you just fully attack, it d even with the Protect, you hit through the Protect. Exactly. The Ursaluna switches maybe the Calyrex, and then the Calyrex is eating something. It's not a great position for Ursaluna. Not a great position. There it There's is, the Hyper, hyper Boy. Boy. It's still going to do considerable damage. Yeah, a ton of damage. Its general goes down. I think you go for maybe the close combat. Yeah, there it is. Posing Urshifu hits the close combat. Actually knocks out Ditto wow. before Ditto even gets a chance. That Trick Room being very impactful. Exactly. Now that you're kind of regretting having that Choice Scarf for that board. Yeah. So we are going to see Maridon come back in, but facing against a ground type in Ursa Luna, what do you do? Twisted Dimensions go back to normal. Electric Train will go back up. I think your only choice here is to ignore the Ursa Luna until the very end. You're trying to get through all of these other threats that you're more effective against first. Yeah, I think you're right. We'll have to see what happens. Here is the Draco Meteor, by the looks of it. No, thinking about it. Still Encored for one more turn. I think you Urshifu, Ursa Luna, then you have to try and do, deal with the Calyrex. Yeah. Oh, looks like he's gonna go in. There's the Draco, Draco Meteor, Meteor to start. out Ursa Luna. But taking that now, that minus two in special attack, I think, I don't think minus two can get it done. You're gonna have to hope for crits from here on out. Yeah, there's the close combat. Wow. That does way too much damage. I think this battle has been decided. Things are definitely looking in Artan's advantage here. Just relying on Calyrex, not even as the main carry, just as added pressure, because it always can spin out of control if left unchecked. Yeah, and I think Trick Room is incredibly strong. Using Trick Room, you, you pretty much make Blood Moon now an incredibly positive cut. There's the Draco Meteor to try and go for it, gets it down to half HP. But that special attack falls, and there's the close combat, finishing off Maridon. And taking a Maridon down. Now, that is going to be game one going over to Arton. We'll see what happens. How does Michael respond? What does he change up? What does he bring differently? I think Ditto is such an interesting Pokemon, but if you can avoid putting Ditto in a position where it can copy Calyrex with a bunch of stat boosts, it makes it a lot harder to use. I think it was good. I really gave him an out out of that uh, Blood Moon Urshif or that Blood Moon uh, Ursaluna. Uh, copying the Urshifu is not a bad pick, but your main goal is to copy that uh, a restricted Pokemon there, because having that Calyrex would have gave you an answer to the Ursaluna, would have given you so much value against pretty much everything on the field. Yeah, R10 also made it to our top eight on Monday, on Monday, or top four on Monday night, or Friday night, it's Monday today, on Friday night. So he's looking for some redemption, trying to get back into that top eight circle and pick up a victory today. Exactly, everyone's hungry for those points. They matter so much as we close in on Worlds. So both these players battling it out, trying to earn that chance for an invite because every point matters so much. And we didn't see the Grim Snarl come out the last game, did no. we? No. Uh, Grim Snarl is an interesting Pokemon. I don't think you need it. I think you can just be so much, you can put a ton of offensive pressure on with your other Pokemon that I think you're picking between Smeargle and Grim Snarl at this point. I think you're correct as well. And honestly, Ursaluna, he doesn't really have a good answer for that on the side of uh, Michael. No, there's the, really not a great answer for Ursaluna. Doesn't have a grass type, doesn't have a water type. No, and that's that's one of the hard things when you're considering team building is can you, do you build a fire, water, grass core? Without that Rilla Boom, without that strong water type, it does create a little bit of a lack, and that's what you have Ditto for. Ditto is there to try and hopefully, I think, get an advantage over Blood Moon Ursaluna, so we'll have to see what he can do. Bring back a victory here. 
exactly gonna try and bring this one back from the brink, but it's gonna be a reverse sweep situation. It's to win this game, the state, and this even have a chance. Artan looking very, very good so far. The Ice Rider, we've seen it so many times today. Finally getting some good use after the past day or two. This is looking to be a very exciting match. Yeah, and both these players are two and one in our tournament so far. So winning this battle will mean a lot for them going into round five. Win this battle, go up to three and one, and then put yourself in a great position. Four and one has been a constant top cut for this weekend. So you don't want to drop to that three and two and have the chance of just bubbling out. Our winner from Monday, Steven, has bubbled out twice this uh, during this tournament. So you don't want to bubble out. So we'll have to see what happens. Exactly. Now, let's see it. Want to try and go for that Electro Drift shutdown once again. It's a big threat, but yeah, I think he knows now Fake Out Pressure is massive here. So he's going to go for the switch into Frigoraph. Yeah, Frigoraph's a really strong Pokemon here. I mean, blocking all of the priority pressure, really good against, um, against Raging Bolts, really good against Pokemon that like to put pressure on. It can also cancel out Trick Room. It can also cancel out Trick Room. If it need does. Be does have Trick Room on it. So that could be a massive play going forward. Oh, no. No! No! That is the worst case scenario, folks. That is uh, absolutely awful. I know we had a crash the other day. We have a crash once again. They're going to quickly try it. Call over no. Judge and figure out the scenario to fix it up here. And the worst thing is that he revealed a trick right there. An absolutely massive play that I don't think Artan was accounting for in that opener. No. I don't think he was ready for Frigoraph. I don't think he was prepared for Frigoraph. But now, here comes Frigoraph and the crash. Yes. You know what? Frigoraph I am excited for the Switch too, so we can hopefully get away from these crashing issues. Of course, of course. Well, we don't know if that's official yet, just yet. We just know that there is a peripherals for potential new consoles, so whoever kn <laughs> who knows what that console may be. But nonetheless, things are looking very exciting in this current set. It's all going to be decided within the next two games. So we're going to throw it to a quick break as we sort out these technical issues, and we'll see you again right back in game.
Hello everybody, welcome back. We're just gonna be going right into game here. Right, we'll jump right back into set. So let's see how this is shaken up. We saw a very big opener last time. We're seeing a different opener here, Calyrex and Smeargle. Same lineup of Rhydon and Ursa Luna. Could be the different lineup for Michael. Yeah, so it looks like Michael here is going for the full spread attack using that Discharge and that Hyper Voice. Discharge able to go off and not hit Ursa Luna because it is that ground type. So we're going full spread, full damage all the time. There it is, there's the Terra on the Maridon. But will the fake out stop this Electro Drift? That's the thing. The no, follow me follow will. Me. No fake outs, just follow me's. Which doesn't deal. matter because they are playing both spread moves. Here's the discharge. Beautiful. How much is this going to do? I have A no lot. clue. It almost knocks out the Smear Goal, but the Smear Goal hangs on thanks to the Sash. But there's a Hyper Voice in the wings. 
Oh, the paralysis. Oh, the paralysis. Wow. Does that matter? No, that, wow, a board wipe from Michael. Takes out both of the leads, the hyper carry and the support, leading him down to two. And Michael continues on with a completely healthy team. Oh, I think that actually did matter. I think Blood Moon Earth Luna was actually slower than the uh, than the Ice Rider. So, because of that paralysis, it allowed Ursula Blood Moon to go first and pick out the double knockout without taking any damage to itself. Now we have an Ursa Luna duel on our hands here, folks. This discharge isn't going to be doing very much at all. You might as well go for an Electro Drift at that point. But maybe you're fishing for that paralysis once again on Ursula. You have that Serene Grace buff in your mind. But now the Terra. This actually might be a Terra on the Ursa Luna. No, it's not. Uh, so that discharge Terra. is still going to single target. We're getting the Steel Bear this time with the axe in the head. Cannot be very comfortable to wear that type of crown. Oh, no, that bear got caught in the wrong lumberjack and woods. There it is. Yeah, There's I'm shocked discharge. you go for the discharge here. Maybe you were predicting that you would see an Ursa Luna Terra instead of the. Wow, wow! It knocks out still through the Terra. There goes Urshifu. Well, yeah, Steel types don't resist Electric type moves. No. So taking just that full force, and here's the Blood Moon. Let's see it. Wow, and even Michael gets to go first here. Wow! Michael clean sweep within two turns! One for the money, two for the show. Oh, right, it is locked into discharge. Yep. Thank you. Very smart decision. A beautiful play. Michael, just all aggression working out, paying off dividends, and honestly. Great way to get him back in here now. We're just finishing out the set. Whoever takes this next one will win it. Yeah, I think if you're a 10, maybe you're confident. Maybe you sort of, during that break, you got taken out of the flow a bit, sort of got lost in the battle, and now had to come into that and just get double, uh, just hit with all of the spread moves. You hate to see it, and that's a ton of damage for Michael there. Absolute and <laughs> amount of damage. Like It's just incalculable amounts yeah, of damage. Like, I cannot believe battle. that the discharge, the spread move, took things down to one, and the Hyper Voice was just there to sweep the board clean. And then once you had uh, those squishier targets up, like the Ursa Luna, that discharge was good enough to knock him out, and that cues up the Ursa Luna to just be hammered down by a Blood Moon. And another amazing part of that is he kind of had to tear the other one to get any, any value there, because the... <laughs> The Ursa Luna couldn't Terra because it needs that immunity from the Discharge. Yeah, our 10 is really going to have to change a few things around here, figure out what he can do differently, get back in the flow. He really has no coverage for these big spread moves. So if you're Michael, do you lead it again and just hit it again and again and again and again? We're seeing the Grimmsnarl Calyrex here. Grimmsnarl making its first appearance on the board versus the Maridon and the Ursa Luna. Yeah, the Hyper Aggro opener once again coming up from Michael. I mean, why not? You won it so handily last time. Hadron Engine is in effect here. And I'm excited to see how this one shakes up. We haven't seen a Grim Snarl ever before in v the, this uh, Tetra Series VGC. No, we'll probably see the Grim Snarl and some screens go up here trying to block a lot of damage. But Grim Snarl has no redirection, so Calyrex is just left in the open to almost force to protect or Trick Room. Could Misty Terrain as well to try and stop some of that electric damage coming its way if it's fast enough, but I don't think it is. I think you're right, they'll reflect the call first. Yeah, probably going for the light screen, block all the... A, a lot of special attackers on Michael's side that you want to block out from hitting their big damage numbers. There it is. Terra Electric has been so brutal, so oppressive once again. Calyrex with the protect, not shocking there. We know it is shocking. This discharge... And there's the light way. screen. So gonna have damage against all those special moves there. Here's the discharge. Let's see how much that light screen protects them. Should do a decent wow. amount. But still, it's so strong, especially with the electric drain up. Wow. Oh, it does a ton to Grimmsnarl. There's and the Blood Moon blood into the Protect. Grimmsnarl will love another turn to either get the Spirit Break up or go for Reflect. Maybe Mystery Train to turn off the electric drain, which is maybe why we'll see the switch to Ditto. But the switch to do will take this Calyrex. So he'll be going in, having another heavy hitter on the way. Yeah, that is the that is the power of Ditto in the back. Frigoraph still also a possibility here to block any prior block any priority moves used against Pokemon, but I don't think that will block Reflect. I don't think it will. 
does not block the status so you can see enemy team. Here but. comes Ditto, so we are gonna see an Ice Horse Ditto. Yeah, here it is. Wow, getting the Calyrex is an absolutely imperative decision. Beautiful play. He has so many hyper carries on this team. The Ursa Luna, the the Rhydon, and now just Frugraf gonna be the one doing all the sport work. Yeah, Frugraf, a really strong Pokemon here. The interesting thing is if maybe Michael did predict this, or if R10 did predict, he could have done a close combat actually into the Ditto, and that would have been a, that would be an insane read if he makes it. Exactly, and I think we're gonna see a close. There's combat. the trick room. Wow. The choice scar from the Ditto now gonna make it move last. Yeah. The interesting thing here is you do have Frigraph up if you want to turn off the trick room. Oh, Glacial right. Lance. But is he slow enough to go play? before uh, the Calyrex? Yeah, I think you need to remove Calyrex as soon as possible. Remove any sort of offensive pressure. Grimmsnarl is not a super impactful offensive threat. This is probably a more defensive build. And there goes Grimmsnarl. Set of miscreants set up the light screen. He did his job and now gets to hang back for when he needs it once again. There's Glacial Lance number one. Doesn't do a ton of damage. Critical wow. hit on Ditto. Wow. That might matter in the future. Glacial Lance number two. Does a bit more to Urshifu, but not a lot to the other Calyrex. And here's the foul play. Does wow. not pick up the knockout. Doesn't pick up the knockout, but still doing considerable damage there. Ooh, do you go for the helping hand to try and knock out the Urshifu, or do you? I think the helping hand might pick up the double knockout. I'm not positive, though. It's a risk. I think that Calyrex could potentially live it. Yeah, we could also see the switch. I doubt we do, but it is an option to keep Calyrex alive. Do you go helping hand? Do you go foul play? Gotta make a right call here. Yeah, there's two decisions here. Two paths diverging. Let's see which timeline is the one that works out best for Michael. There's the helping hand. We are looking for the two hit knockout here. Going for the gambit. Glacial Lance. You have to live this one. You Both will. Pokemon live on 60 HP each. Glacial Lance from Dino does this get the double knockout. Yes, it and does. It dies. Beautiful play by Michael, getting the double knockout, getting the double chilling nay to boot, and now he has a activated. <laughs> yeah, now you have a plus two ditto, and you have a Maridon hanging in the back, and you still have Blood Moon Ursaluna, and you still have all of these big threats. The other Ursaluna is going to take the field, and here comes Grimmsnarl back out. I think Ursaluna can pick up the knockout on. Actually, if Ursaluna picks up the knockout on Ditto, this battle is not as over as it would seem. Well, I, we're still in Trick Room though. Is this Ursa Luna slow enough? Can it try to outspeed in Trick Room this Calyrex? I think it, it might. Yeah, I don't disagree here with Farigraph actually thinking about turning off Trick Room as you want to make sure your other support Pokemon are ready to go. I don't even think it needs Helping Hand at this point either. No, I think you'd be totally fine without a Helping Hand. I think Trick Room here is a great call. Turn off Trick Room for the rest of the battle. Make sure it's gone. Exactly. But now, Hyper Voice. Ursaluna goes first. Gets a Hits double knockout. knockout. Beautiful play. Now this keeps Trick Room up. And now, for at least one more turn, he's going to be at the disadvantage. Resetting the Mirada on once again. And another Ursaluna. So there's a duel going on, but there's a little bit more offensive power on the side of Michael. But this light screen and the support capabilities might allow this Ursaluna to get the edge out over on Michael. Yeah, I don't know if Maridon itself survives the full power Earth power here, so we will have to see. I have a feeling it doesn't, but I can't be positive. Exactly, and it can't move first and doesn't have any protect or anything to go its way. I think the Draco meter already being hovered. I think they just want to get this Ursaluna out of here. Yeah, he's confident he can win the duel with this Grimstone. I don't see why not. Just focus in on this Ursaluna. Get your moves in where you can. You should be able to close to that. Yeah, you have to remove Ursaluna from the field as fast as possible. If it stays around, you're in a ton of trouble. It's going for the Misty Terrain. It would matter if that was an electric move, but you can't use it against a ground type. There is blood There's moon. the Blood Moon. Wow! You need to protect! Wins it out with the Protect. Beautiful read by Michael. Here's the Draco Meteor. 
does, does not, not KO, pick up the knockout. I'm pretty sure Misty Train de decreases the power of Dragon type moves. Beautiful play on both sides. Still in this, but now Artan in a very risky spot. He's just a few moves away from being knocked out. You see Blood Moon and Dragon and Draco Meteor here from Michael locked into Draco Meteor on that Maridon. Does not have Protect on his. He does not. On his Ursaluna, so he's going to have to go for an offensive move here. Here's the Terra. Are we seeing Terra Normal? Or are we seeing Terra Fairy? There it is. The Terra Normal is unleashed. It's going all power. offense. Yeah, this Ursaluna has to survive for one more turn. I do not know whose Ursaluna is faster. Is the Draco Meteor once again? Doesn't do all too much damage, especially with that uh, special attack drop. There's well, the Blood Moon. Will this be enough to take him out? No, Doesn't. it takes out the Grim Snarl. Oh. Ursaluna still gets to move here. This could be absolutely risky for both players. There's the hyper normal hyper voice. Doesn't do enough. Wow, it knocks out Ursaluna. Beautiful play. And now with the double special attack drop. Very, very low, one HP. It's Trick Room still up. No, that's the only is down. thing. It needs to crit. Draco Meteor at minus four. Does not get the kill. Wow. Artan hangs on by the <laughs> by the <laughs> seat of his pants. Yeah, the skin of his teeth, seat of his pants. <laughs> Beautiful play <laughs> by Artan. Wow. I cannot believe that. Michael's gone. Michael stood up in, in shock there. Now, R10 a... now moves to three and one in our day today. R10 drops to two and two. We'll need to win his next round to even have the hope of getting into top cut. What an incredible battle. What an incredible battle indeed. And wow, I cannot believe that is how that one turned out. That was so close all the way to the end. And what a second round from Michael. We got to give him props for that. That was an absolutely amazing second round. Just the absolute sweep was amazing to watch. We haven't seen a round that heavy handed in a while. No, Michael really went full offense there and completely destroyed everything. And but uh, Artend was able to bounce back, change his strategy up a little bit, and win it in the end with Blood Moon Ursaluna. I, so. I wonder if taking out the Grim Style that turn instead of the Ursaluna is what g gave him the vic the loss. I understand needing to focus on that Grim Style because Marina couldn't have touched Grim Style if it was left. So you have to remove Grim Style, but leaving Blood Moon there really hurt him in the end. Yeah, it really did hurt in the end, but you know. Artan played that one very, very well as well. He came back from a really bad position. He had his Ice Rider stolen from him, couldn't even keep up with the pace that it was set at, and he managed to close it out. He managed to bring this one all the way back from the brink, and that's why you always got to hold out for those amazing plays. Yeah, as much as I hate to say it, I don't think we've seen an Ice Rider team lose today. No. So Ice Rider is still on the path of domination. So it really is up into round five to see if we can see Ice Rider take a loss in Swiss, or will Ice Rider complete the clean sweep today? So those, answer, those questions will be answered and more after a quick break. So don't go anywhere. We have more Pokemon on its way.